Good morning, and welcome to the Saturday Morning Sports Show here on 97.3 WRUL, as well as 93.3 WROI AM 1460 and online at WRUL.com. Cole Carter with you, being joined by Chris Myers as J.C. Tinsley's across the hallway getting us on the air. Our first episode here for the 2023-2024 sports season. It was a long summer, Chris, mm-hmm. with, with you know high school sports being... <laughs> Uh, on the summer break, but happy that football season is back. It's a little bit cooler out today than it was yesterday, so I think we're finally getting in that rhythm of, okay, football season's here. Yeah, they always uh, kind of, I've seen some memes about weather around here, what is it they call, uh, sometimes we'll get false fall in <laughs> August, and then after that, the threshold of Hades type weather, so we definitely had that, and the week before teased us, and this past week was just an absolute furnace, and uh yeah, I think we're all looking forward. First of all, it's just so exciting to be back for another football season. But, yeah, we're looking for forward to fall football-type weather. So real quick, a couple of things going on today over at the high school, Harrington Jeffrey Sports Complex. The junior pro Bulldogs are going to kick off here in about 30 minutes as the, uh, the Bulldogs take on Christopher. The fifth and sixth grade game will start at 930 with the 7th and 8th grade game to follow. And the junior high softball team is also in action at the Johnson City Tournament today. I do want to feel for our friends over at St. Jude, uh, the 618 St. Jude crew. They were planned to have a wiffle ball fundraiser tournament today. Unfortunately, with the storm that came through last night, that has been canceled. So I feel bad for all those guys that worked hard to put that together. It was canceled earlier this morning. Do you want to take some time to thank the sponsors for the sports show and uh, football season this year for WRUL? They are Little Giant Grocery Outlet, Rice Motor Company, Hale Body Shop, Carmine Lumber Company, Pro Rehab, People's National Bank, Taylor Eye Care, Bush and Associates CPAs, Wabash General Hospital, Higginson Farms, Hamilton Memorial Hospital, Rush Appliance, Citizens National Bank, Nancy J. Winter CPA, Cherry Street Automotive, Southern Illinois Trading and Supply, First Bank, Expressway Ford, Slays Carpet, Farrell Hospital, Country Financial Representative Kyle Hosick, and Wabash Christian Village. All right, so last night, the Carmine White County Bulldogs began the 2023 campaign with a big 52-16 win over the Flora Wolves. Well, Chris, we'll just kind of start with the week leading up to the game, and we'll hear Coach Kurtz. I'm going to talk about it here in a minute. But, um, the, of course, the heat wave came through. We talked about the IHSA forcing some schools to make some adjustments. You know, for the – oh, it's always been you practice after school, 3.30 to 5. It's just how you do it. Well, the Bulldogs, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday were forced to go 6 a.m. to 7.30 in the morning or 6 a.m., 7.15, whatever it was. Um, I – I don't like getting up at 6 a.m. now as a 23-year-old. I can't imagine getting up at 6 6 o'clock, even earlier as a 17, 18-year-old, and and having to do a football practice. But uh, those kids embraced it, and uh, it obviously paid off, as you you saw last night. Yeah, it did. It was just, um, you know, the rules are different now. The IHSA, you know, with just the way things are, you you have to look out for the safety of the kids. and. Uh, that is the rule. You know, the temperature gets a certain point with heat index. You know, you're forced to limit things and, and to adjust the way they did. You know, that that is for a lot of kids. It would be for me. You know, it, it's a, it can be a brutal change, you know, and, and it also kind of limits your time is what you can do. You know, if you're in the afternoon after school, if you need things aren't looking real good for you know, how your team's preparing, you can say, we're going to go a little longer. We need to work on this. You know, if you're you're going before school, you got to be done by a certain time. So you got to cram a lot. You know, the kids, it's early and it's still humid. It's still hot even at that time of day. But, you know, I, I think that added an, kind of an aspect of toughness, you yeah. know, to the, the preparation week. Because, yeah, we're not going at our normal time. You know, you're going to be here. You're up 530 in the morning minimum. And you got pads on and going full steam at 6 a.m. So, you know, hats off to the kids and the coaches for adjusting to that because you know that that's not always easy. You know, you know other towns. You know, if you if your facilities are limited, what have you, you know, you may not have even be able to do that. So, um, the way they adjusted to that and their week of preparation definitely it it showed last night. And also had to adjust last night with the kickoff being pushed back an hour. But uh, once 8 o'clock came around, man, the dogs, they were ready to play. First drive, they marched right down the field and cap it off with a 10-yard touchdown run by Andrew Dotson. 
We were talking last week during the Gator Bowl. Bulldogs come out. They had a little bit of power eye, a little bit of T, but mainly we were seeing some new things, throwing the football around, and we thought, okay, we're gonna we're gonna spread things out. We're right. back to the Jake Simon days here this year <laughs> for the Bulldogs, but we were wrong because Carmine came out, especially there in the first half, the uh, first quarter, and just right back to where they were last year. You would have thought it was King and Odd back there in the backfield with the way the Dotson, Sievers, Pollard, and those guys ran the football from under center, hard nose, line of scrimmage. Bulldog football. There's there's the old saying, you know, and, and to your point, Cole. There's it's called if it ain't broke, don't fix it. <laughs> and apparently last night that, that was kind of all of our speculation. Okay, are, how are things going to have to change? Are we going to have to do things different? Well, obviously we didn't because the, those young men picked right right up where they left uh, the backfield left off last year, and the offensive line again, uh, as we've said, is going to be a strength for this team. It's not going to be. It is. You know, you got three kids coming back on that group and uh Ryder and, and Peyton and also uh let's see Austin, 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 Austin Owen, yeah. thank you. Those three coming back. You were returning starters on the line from last year and joined by Eli Bryant at the tackle position, Connor Buchanan at center. That's just it is gonna be one of the most consistent solid units that, you know, Kurt Simons had in, in, in his entire coaching tenure. He said that's gonna be the strength of this team and they showed it last night. When you when you have a solid, experienced, uh, hardworking, determined. When you have a good group of kids up front, it's going to make everyone else's job a lot easier. And, and, and they played so well last night. Uh, but that goes hand in hand as we're going to get to the f- performance by those three young men in the backfield. You mentioned Dodson, Noah Pollard, but Caleb Sievers, which we'll discuss. I mean, his first time playing offense in his entire high school career. He comes in last night as a senior and just absolutely lit up the scoreboard. And that was Caleb Sievers, of course, not Andrew Sievers, as I called yeah. him, Andrew. <laughs> probably three or four times last night, which I do apologize for, but week one, uh, you'll have some issues for myself. Uh, but Dodson with that 10-yard touchdown run, eight and a half minutes to go there in the first quarter. Sievers ran to the two-point play, and the Dogs led 8 nothing. Carmine did force a three and out defensively, and it took Flora, I believe, until the second quarter just to get a first down. Uh, the Bulldog defense last night was flying around, making some huge plays, and Flora just could not move the football. No, in a spread team, the kind of rhythm you want to get in early, you like to hit those quick outs. You know, you, you don't huddle. If you do, it's very quick. You know, you're trying to keep a defense on their heels just by moving the ball quickly. But the Bulldogs, just at every level, the D-line, the linebackers, the secondary, were just spot on in so many so many ways. You know, I, Nelson Ryder coming off the edge had two sacks. I know uh, Gavin Payton, Eli Bryant had tackles for losses there early. The corners, I mean, Caleb Siebers from his linebacker position, I mean, he's just all over the field. He was, I mean, he was a Lawrence Taylor type player last night, the way he was tackling and hitting. And the corners did a good job. Early in the year, when you're facing a spread team, the big thing you got to do is know your assignment. you gotta, you got to have your right position. How far are you off the ball? Do I have the right leverage? And you have to defend the run as well as a pass. And that, you know, for a corner, you're five yards off the ball. you got a receiver. you got to honor when you make contact with him, okay, is he just setting me up to, for a pass? Or if he is what they call stock blocking me, i got to be able to get off that and make a play quickly, and I, and I just think the Bulldogs played so well that the tone they set with that first three and out, definitely, you know, that hit Flora in the mouth. I think once they got that three and out on Flora's first possession, I, I think that is what set the tone for the rest of the game. Carmine did have to punt on their second possession, but they got the football back and drove right back down the field, capped it off with a two-yard touchdown run from Caleb Siebers. He ran in the two-point play, and Carmine led 16 to nothing. After the first quarter of play, they got the football back once again, and Dotson found the end zone for the second time, this time from three yards out. Two-point conversion failed. Carmine then led 22 to nothing. Bulldogs capped off the first half with a seven-yard run from Seepers. He also ran the two-point play with about three minutes left to go, and the Bulldogs led 30 to nothing there at halftime and had a Put the 40 points on for the running clock, so a couple more scores in the third quarter. Noah Pollard found the end zone from 17 yards out. That was a great run from Noah on that yeah. touchdown run. Broke a couple of tackles and was able to bust to the outside. Another guy that saw some snaps on the defensive end last year, uh, got some uh, reps at running back when the dogs had big leads, but uh, 
you know, he's going to be right there in the mix. And he looked pretty good over the number one last year, or uh, uh, last night. Uh, and he ran the ball very well, including the touchdown run. He sure did, you know. And you heard me say last night he's uh, listed at 165 pounds, but he plays like he's 225. I mean, every bit of that 165 is solid muscle. This is a kid that every other minute he's in the weight room, either at the high school or at the fitness center down the road here. But he he has the mentality of a 225 pound fullback when he carries the ball. So it, it, he he made a great effort last night. Noah also ran in the two-point conversion to extend Carmi's lead with 7.38 to play in the third quarter. Uh, and then to put the icing on the cake for the first-team offense, uh, first play of their next possession, Caleb Siebers, 74 yards, broke away. Uh, Wiggins ran the two-point play to really put the icing on the cake. And um, that was a carry again where Siebers got out the middle, just broke some tackles. The next thing you know, he had one guy left to beat. It just ran right past him. But uh, that capped off his night, 212 rushing yards for Caleb Siebers last night uh, in, in his first game starting at running back. He was just saying, okay, I'm going to take a page out of the Isaac King book from last year. But the performance he had, again, this is a young man, his first year literally playing offense, uh, probably as a freshman. That may have been the last time he was consistently on the offensive side of the ball. And for a senior like that who's waited and waited for his opportunity, I mean, that was – you couldn't ask for anything better. It just congratulations to that young man on the night he had. That that 74-yard run for me was the play of the game, just yep. to see him get that, break that thing. And, you know, by that point in the game, all these kids were just exhausted. You, you could just see it. And he, he was just playing on guts at that point. But – uh, I, I just remember on that play, there was just a tremendous block from Gavin Payton on a pull. Came through what we call kind of like on the old power G, pulling a tackle or guard around, coming up in the hole. Payton literally leveled that linebacker, and Sievers just took that thing, and he was gone. So just, just to me, that was just great to see, just him being rewarded for you know his years of work. And as a senior, you know, love seeing that. The Bulldogs wrapped up the scoring in the fourth quarter with about nine minutes left to go when Kale Wiggins found the end zone from eight yards out to give us the final score of 52-16. to 16. Uh, Of course, these stats courtesy of our guy Toby Brown and his crew, Kevin Brown, Daryl Nelson, and Brian Weaver working hard every week to make sure uh, these stats get done and get to us. Let's see, what time? 12.41 this morning is when Toby sent me this email. So, yeah. you know, uh, he had a late night last night, but, of course, we appreciate him and all those stat guys. Uh, first down department, Bulldogs 20 first downs, just five for Flora. Carmine ran the ball 41 times for 411 yards. Flora just 13 rushes for 60 yards. Uh, Lena Driscoll, uh, one for five through the air, just six passing yards, and really didn't need to throw the football that much. No. And I think that's going to come with time. And we'll hear, we'll hear Coach talk about it here in the postgame interview. But uh, you give Landon a couple of weeks, I think he's going to look better and better and get more comfortable. Yeah, week one, when the passing game isn't your number one option, you're going to have a few you know hiccups and things that happen. But the positive for me in watching what Landon did is his presence in the pocket. He never panicked. There were a couple times he dropped back to throw. He had a lot of pressure coming at him. In fact, one uh, backer blitzed right through the left A gap and was just had his sight set on him. He set his feet and threw a dime to the end zone. And you know, to me, I, I what I thought was impressive, even though we didn't convert the play, was the fact he just had the presence to stand there. He didn't pa- he didn't panic. He didn't start shuffling his feet or side to scramble or just you know, take the sack, he stood there and made the throw, you know, stood tall and, and you know, threw a good-looking football. Um, you know, and you do. We had some miscommunication on another throw. A receiver went one way, a ball went the other. It was almost picked, but that happens. That it, when, when it's not your bread and butter, you know, th- that's going to happen. But I, I think they're going to improve on that. They'll, they'll work <laughs> on that. They'll get good timing. He had a nice 14-yard run. It was a, a third and about 15. Mm-hmm. And he escaped pressure in the pocket. And to me, that's an element that he brings to the Bulldog offense this year that, you know, is something that coaches, opposing coaches have to keep in mind. If you do pressure this kid, he's six foot four, he can run, he's as athletic as all get out. If he escapes the pocket, you know, he can do some things. You know, you, you can even consider calling some quarterback draws or some option plays. So that, that's an element he brings. But I'm with you, Cole. I think the the passing game will fall in line as time goes, but 
when when your bread and butter is running the football and you're doing that well, you know, you just you're, you're going to plan A always. Neither team turned the ball over last night. Carmine was three for seven on third downs, two for two on fourth downs. Flora 0 for seven on third and 0 for one on fourth down. Bulldogs three penalties for 30 yards, just one for five for Flora. And Carmi in time of possession, 31 minutes and one second. Flora had the ball for just under 17 minutes. And the rushing department, Caleb Sieber, 16 carries, 212 yards and three touchdowns. Andrew Dotson, seven carries for 79 yards and two scores. Noah Pollard, six carries, 48 yards and one touchdown. Trayton Vickers, two carries for 29 yards. Mentioned the 14-yard run by Driscoll. Kale Wiggins, two carries for eight yards and one touchdown. Jazz Duckworth had two carries for eight yards. Madden Anderson, two carries for six yards. Merrick Milhorn, two carries for three yards. And Easton Sullivan, one carry for four yards. Driscoll's one completion was to Noah Pollard for a six-yard gain. So again, the Bulldogs defeat Flora last night, 52-16. to It was a happy Kurt Simon in the postgame, and here's what he had to say. Coach, overall, I mean, I think given the circumstances this week and you guys graduate such a great class last year, can't be pretty, can't be too upset about what happened tonight. No, I thought the good thing, you know, coming out tonight, which we thought was going to be our strong point this year, we were going to, you know, have a good chance to be good up front. And I thought those guys did a really nice job tonight controlling the line of scrimmage. Uh, I thought the backs did a good job hanging on to the football. Did we have any turnovers? Nope. Didn't think so. Which, that's huge in the first yep. game. And that's something we talked about, you know, all week long, about this going to be a, you know, hot game. Everyone's going to be tired. That's when a lot of times you put the ball on the ground. So, uh, with that being said, it was a really good first outing. To me, you know, you hit the nail on the head. You knew the strength coming into this season is your offensive line. Watching mm -hmm. them tonight, they are, as if, to, in my opinion, as consistent and solid of a unit as you've had in 27 years. I'm, it's, you know, they're right up there with any group you've and had. We got, we got, and we've got obviously got a ways to go or whatever, but, you know, they've all got a chance to play quite a bit last year. They all got good size. Uh, they work hard. And that's what comes of it. So, yes, yeah. I mean, we know that's our strong point. And any time you want to be successful in this game, you better be good up front, yeah. uh, as you two both know. Yeah, and your uh, seniors came and through. And so we, mm -hmm. uh, you know, just told those guys in there, great first win, and now now you got to make sure that we go out next week and get better and get better and get better, you know. Uh, so they got a good group of kids, though. Well, they'll go back to work. i tell you, a young man, or, you know, we were talking here in the booth, who really stood out to me tonight. Caleb Sievers. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's been a defensive specialist since he was a sophomore. We all know the kind of defender he is. I right. mean, he's as good of a tackler, good yeah. as a ball hawk as there's ever yeah. been in, in this program. But to be a senior and put on a performance like that tonight, not turning the ball over, yeah. be it, I mean, he – we dare we say it? We were kind of having Isaac King flashbacks on some of those <laughs> runs. He was carrying defenders, he's stiff a, arm and he's, hurdling. He's a tough kid. Yeah, he's a good football player. That's that's what you look at as for as a football player. You know, uh, your your hundred and eighty pound kid that that's a tough kid. He's a north and south kid. Uses his shoulder pads well. I thought he did early in the game, doing a great job defensively, running down kids. And then of course, yeah, the the running was really good tonight. So. Uh, we just got to build on it. We just got to build on it. Obviously, we have some work to do on our passing game. We have, you know, that's where our inexperience is, that receiver running routes and, and, and trying to get to the right spot. And Landon hasn't played too much quarterback as well. And, uh, you know, if we're going to line up and be able to compete with some really good teams, we've got to be able to do both of them. Right. We're capable of doing both. We've seen glimpses of it in practice. We just got to, you know, continue to get better at that. And the young kids, got to they got to come along. We got to learn from our mistakes on the, watching film. Um, and just get better. Uh, yeah. So as long as we can be a little bit more balanced, we don't want to wind up with 10 guys in the box like we had last year all the time. We want to be able to get in some spread stuff and, and keep people, you know, and, and they, they're they not going to spread out there unless you can throw and catch. So we got some work to do there. Defensively, you know, facing floor, that's a tough team to defend because they want to spread things out. they got some quick guys that uh, when they have the football, they've got some speed we saw out there at the end mm -hmm. of the game. But mm -hmm. I thought defensively, I mean, it took them – Halfway to the second quarter, to get a first down. I thought we were flying you around. Guys were yeah, they, we were we were flying around. Yeah. You know, in the first the first game of the year, and almost every year, but for sure where we live in Southern Illinois, you're going to get hot, humid nights, and 
you got to be able to fight through that adversity and just play the game like it's supposed to be played. And we talked about it so much, and I thought, you know, le- you know, led by our seniors, they were showing enthusiasm, a lot of energy, and flying around. It just, it just breeds to the next guy and to the next guy. And yes, I thought very early on, I thought defensively we looked really good. Yeah. Just to kind of give people at home watching an idea of what your guys' week has been, because obviously you, you were not allowed to practice at 3.30. You've got these kids coming in, you know, how early. And, and how did these guys, you know, respond? They responded to well, to be honest with you. I mean, we practiced at 6 o'clock in the morning, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. By Thursday, we were getting wore out, you know, I mean, whether it's the sleep or whatever. Um and it was still, you know, humid in the morning or whatnot, and obviously couldn't practice as long. Uh, but it was a long week. And, but you know, this is why we do what we do. Right. Uh, this is the best high you can get, in my opinion, is walking off the field on a night like tonight, dog tired, and we won. Yeah. So my credit goes to the kids. Yeah, and and that's in the game of football. You know, early in the year, practice as much. It's a mental grind. Oh, you yeah. know, it, it, and. The reward is what you said mm-hmm. tonight. That that's the reward you get for the hard work. And once the kids realize that, it's it's going to keep in and keep rolling. Yeah, yeah. Real quickly, one other, going back to offense. You know, talking about Landon Driscoll. You know, I think one element he brings. He's six foot four and an athletic. Yeah. And there were a couple sure. times he, you know, he had pressure coming. He didn't panic. Mm-hmm. You know, had that that throw in the end zone there, just mm-hmm. missed on it. But he looked beautiful back there. I mean, standing in there. Backer was He'll be okay. He, yeah, yeah, he's going to be fine. He can do he, some things. A, running, you know, he's one of those kids that you love to coach because he does everything right. Yeah, um, I mean that's what I would say about Landon Driscoll right now. Just watching him as an athlete from when he was a freshman all the way up till now, he always works hard. So hopefully we just we just again we got to get better every week. Uh, good first win uh, on a difficult week or whatever, but that that's maybe that that bodes well for us the remainder of the year. Maybe those weeks, maybe we won't be getting up at 6 o'clock so, in the morning. So 6 a.m. practice all season is what you're saying. Well, right? the thing is, you know, some of the guys, you know, yeah. most of your linemen guys were like, Coach, I think that's a pretty good idea. That's, you know, I'm like, boys, we're practicing after school yeah. at the end of College Boulevard for two hours. So yeah. don't think about coming in here doing the hour and 15-minute thing all year. All right. All right. Well, Coach, congrats on the win, and thanks for your time. We'll all talk right. to you next Thank week. Thank you very much. Great job, Coach. Thanks. That's Kurt Simon last night after the Bulldogs defeated Flora 52 52- to 16. We'll take our first break of the morning. We come back, we'll look at more scores from last night and look ahead to the Bulldogs Week 2 matchup with the Hamilton County Foxes right here on the Saturday Morning Sports Show on 97.3 WRUL and 93.3 WROI AM 1460. Welcome back to the Saturday Morning Sports Show here on 97.3 WRUL and 93.3 WROI AM 1460, Cole Carter and Chris Myers with you. J.C. Tinsley across the hall getting us on the air. Do want to apologize for some technical difficulties we had last night on the radio side. It's week one. You're always going to have some some sort of technical difficulty, but as far as I know, everything was good on the YouTube side of things, so fans were able to watch the game on the WREL Sports YouTube channel. They can even go back and watch it uh, starting today. Looking at other scores from last night <clears throat> around Southern Illinois and Southern Indiana uh, and conference playing the BDC, of course, Carmine the Big one over Flora, 52-16. to El Dorado gets past Edwards County, 12-7. to Johnson City over CZR, 32-12. Uh, Cesar Valier over Hamilton County, 34-16. to And Freeburg defeats Fairfield, 28-20. to So those of you at, that's been out of the loop, Viana Goreville forced to uh, not compete at the varsity level this season. So a lot of the BD, every BDC team had a scramble to find an opponent for that week. That was Fairfield's problem week one. They played Freeburg in an eight-point loss. Chris, just kind of looking at scores from around the conference last night, talking to coaches, hearing rumors, it sounds like it's going to be the big three again, Carmi, Fairfield, and Johnson City. And Cesar Valier will be good as well. Yeah, in speaking with uh, Kurt Simon before the season, he, you know that's kind of the general consensus. And really, you look at that score, yeah, Fairfield did lose last night, but Freeburg is not a weak team. I mean, that is a that is a solid football program that they played week one. So, you know, don't be deceived by that score because, you know, Fairfield's still a very good football team. Uh, Johnson City is in a point in their program where they're not rebuilding, they're mm-hmm. reloading. And Sesser is just every year in, year out, they're bringing athletes to the field. You know, that, that program is, is a very solid program. You know, that 
that was a team last year, you know, in that game, I, I think, you know, looking at we did blow them out last year, but a lot of things just went our way that really turned momentum in that game. And I think just kind of just punched them in the gut early and they, you know, never could recover. But I think that's that's a team that can't be slept on because they're going to come here, I believe, in week four. They'll come to five. Bar- week five, excuse me. And, uh, Probably Sesser. It is Sesser. I'm sorry, week four. Yeah, yeah. Sesser is week four. Yeah, yes, week I'm four. Sorry. And, and that's going to be a good football team, you know. Um, so yeah, it's yeah, I think it's a case this year in the conference. The usual players are right there with each other. Uh, Going to be big tests, you know. Week four, Sesser at home. Week five at Fairfield. So that's that's kind of a gauntlet. And right now, it's looking like week three, uh, unless we get some news uh, to the contrary, is is an open week. So uh, you know, I, if we do have a bye week, then that'll give us time to prepare for two two really good football teams. We got to play back to back. So. Uh, and, you know, looking back at last year, Johnson City, the knock on the Black Diamond Conference, you know, and it, we can just say it for years has been, well, no team really advances. Even your 9-0 and team, look, there's years, the 9-0s and don't even get out of the first round, second round at most. That's kind of been the knock on the conference. And, you know, uh, how, how good is it if, if no team can advance that far? Well, that that question was finally answered last year when you had a Johnson City team that got to the semifinals. You know, a, a very good team that the Bulldogs, at one point in that game, were up two scores on. Yeah. You know, that and that tells you the level of football we could play when we were clicking last year. But, you know, the, I think that kind of, I, I guess you could say, validated in a lot of ways, you know, the, the, the conference, the talent that's in the conference, you know, Johnson City getting that far, playing a um, – I think it was, uh, was Bismarck they played. It was uh, in the, the semifinal. Semis, uh, yeah. St. Teresa. St. Teresa, Decatur, thank Saint you, Teresa. up there, you know, who obviously went on to play for a state championship. But Johnson City played that team well for a half. And uh, so, really, I think that if there's a positive in that, it, it brought validation for the conference. Yeah. And so that tells you going into this year, you know, you are playing some good teams when you're talking about Johnson City, Fairfield, Sesser, you know. So I, I think – it's good. It's a good thing for the conference overall. And if you do get to the playoffs, having played some teams at that level, that gives you that experience when you get in the first round. Because as we learned from last year, and it's a different game once postseason comes around. Some of the other non-conference scores from around the area last night. Carterville defeats Benton 27-12. to Casey Westfield shuts out Red Hill 26 to nothing. Effingham over Robinson 31 to 7. Gibson Southern they cross the border and defeat Mount Carmel 21 to 14. The Titans trailed 14 nothing at halftime in that game. Harrisburg over Anna Jonesboro 39 to 14. Uh, let's see Murfreesboro over Carbondale 49 to 7. Nashville over, all over Carlisle 42 to 8. It was it's been all the local scores. Shelbyville over Newton 42 to 7. Taylorville defeats Olney 41 to 6. West Frankfort over Massac County 26 to 7. A lot of games that have been pushed back to today. Of local note, uh, Ducoin is at Chester tonight. Marion is at Heron tonight, and I believe that's pretty much it as far as local and relevant games to us. But we're seeing a lot of games were pushed back to 8 o'clock last night, or pushed back to this afternoon or tonight uh, due to the heat. Some scores over in Indiana from last night. It was Jasper shutting out Harrison, thirty-nine to nothing. Forest Park over Perry Central, thirty-seven to twenty-six. As well as let's see, North Posey over Princeton, thirty-four to seven. Heritage Hills over Tell City, fifty-six to seven. Wrights defeats Vincennes Lincoln, twenty-three to seven. Memorial shuts out North, seventeen nothing. Castle over Modern Day, forty-nine to seven. Bossy over Central, 48-6. to six. And a couple of more games are set for today. Boonville will play Southridge. Washington will host Edgewood. Tecumseh is at Pike Central. And Mount Vernon travels to South Spencer. That's about all the area scores from last night uh, in Southern Illinois and Southern Indiana. As far as the Bulldogs, what they have next is the Hamilton County Foxes here at home next Friday. Uh, it's going to be a great night, Chris. Of course, that first home game is always exciting. Uh, but the Bulldogs will be honoring that great 2003 
a team that went all the way to the quarterfinals. We don't know much about Hamilton County. We know they were competitive with Cesar Valier for the first half uh, last night. I think the the idea is simple. Just do what you did last night for the Bulldogs, and you're going to be just fine. Yeah, I think what you'll see from Hamco is uh, some some diversity with their offense. They will do some spread. Uh, you'll probably see some multiple backfield formations under center, you know, either a, a double wing look or, you know, a twin receiver. You'll see a lot of different formations from Hamilton County. But the thing is, they're always well coached. You know, it, it's a program that's made a lot of strides in recent years. They, they got a junior league going back in 2015. And I think from that point, that really helped elevate their high school program. So they will be a, you know, a very competitive team. They'll come in. You know, going 100, 100 miles an hour, playing hard. It's a you know, local rival coming in. So, I, you know, I think it's, it's going to be a great atmosphere for Carmine coming off a big win. The thing is, you just can't let your guard down. You know, week one's in the bag. You know, great job in your accomplishments. But in football, you got to have a short memory, whether you win or lose, because the next challenge is in front of you to prepare for. So I think it's going to be just a, a great night altogether, like you said, Cole, and but Carmi has to do what they do best, come out and play physical football on both sides of the line, pound the ball between the tackles, establish your run game, and then on defense, just come up and play smash-mouth defense, get sacks, get in the backfield, cover your receivers well. If they do that, I, I think the Bulldogs will have a good night this coming Friday. Again, that is this Friday, September 1st, as the Bulldogs host Hamilton County at 7 p.m. We'll take our second break in the morning. When we come back, we will look at the other sports going on here for Carmi White County. It's a Saturday morning sports show on 97.3 WREL and 93.3 WROI. J.C. Tinsley getting us on the air across the hall. Cole Carter and Chris Myers with you. It's a Saturday morning sports show on 97.3 WREL and 93.3 WROI. So it was a unique week for really all sports teams around the state of Illinois and really around the Midwest with the big heat wave that came in. Um, a lot of outdoor activities were canceled. So girls tennis, high school golf, junior high uh, baseball and softball did not play any competitive games or matches this week. Uh, really had to adjust their practice schedule. for From the junior high baseball perspective, mm-hmm. we had to practice at 8 p.m. Uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, and wow. Thursday, which was uh, unique. But uh, still, you'd be surprised how humid it can still be yes. at 8 o'clock at night. But um, volleyball was the only team that was in action. We will get to them here in a moment. But as far as the boys and girls golf team, they did play a couple of matches last week and the week before uh, this heat wave came in, back on August 10th. The boys and girls played up at the Mount Carmel Invitational. The boys finished fourth. The girls finished third. Max and O'Daniel finished seventh individually. Ava Shever was seventh. May Vanaberry was tenth. Then on August 15, the boys hosted NCOE and Edwards County, defeated both of them. Aiden Willis was a medalist, shooting a 42. That same day, the girls fell to Massac County, 180 to 207. Then on August 17th. The girls lost to Harrisburg by just five strokes, 197 to 202. And the boys took down the Purple Bulldogs, 162 to 211. Max O'Daniel shot a 37. Of course, girls tennis, they were supposed to start their season on Monday, I believe, at Salem. And that was when the cancellations began. So they are looking for their first match, which will be later on this week. As far as the Lady Bulldog volleyball team, they're off to a hot start. A 2 nothing or 2-0 and record as they played two matches Monday and Tuesday. Monday they hosted Mount Carmel and got a dominant 25-15 and 25-16 win. Then on Tuesday they traveled to Edwards County and took down Lady Lions 25-19 and 25-22. To 22. This season, we are streaming all of the home volleyball matches on the WRUL Sports YouTube channel. Jason Craig is back to help us with those. As I'll just, I'll just say this: his volleyball knowledge is ten times more than mine will ever be. <laughs> I, Chris, I know your wife, big volleyball girl. I, I, I know nothing about volleyball. I, I'm sorry, I just don't. <laughs> oh, uh, same here. I, you know, I, if I tried to call a volleyball match to be and he hit it over the net, um, that was a great a spot. job. Yeah, nice, <laughs> nice play. <laughs> no, Jason is just fantastic. You know, he, him being the former head coach of the yep. Carmi Volleyball Program, knowing the game, knowing how to call it, he, he did a great job. But by all accounts, this this uh, Lady Bulldog Volleyball team is going to be pretty salty this fall. You know, in, in a conference with Fairfield, I yep. believe, is ranked yep. in the top five. 
I think they have North City on their schedule, but this team looks really solid so far out the gate. A lot of great volleyball teams in Southern Illinois, and Carmine a chance to be uh, right there in the mix there in that top five conversation. But Jason Craig did sit down with uh, Chris Lucas after Monday's win, and here's what Coach Lucas had to say. And longtime pal Chris <laughs> Lucas joins me, and it's good to see you, man. It's good to see you too, man. <laughs> um, you know, I'm pretty sure I made a comment up here about it's not very often that your first opponent is the one that sent you out the year before. And I said something to the point, well, if I know Chris Lucas, I bet you he's got a little gravel in his crawl for this one. And really from the get-go, your ladies came out and showed, yeah, it left a sour taste in our mouth last year. We're returning the favor. Absolutely. We uh, <laughs> talked about that at practice all last week about how this is the team that ended our season last year. They beat us two out of three times last year, and um, they're uh, really turning the program around at Mount Carmel, and, and they're a competitive athletic uh, team this year as well. they got um, several returning players. and But, yeah, we uh, it, it didn't feel too good to lose that regional game, and we didn't just lose. We got beat badly. And so, um, yeah, we, it was nice to come here and return the favor to them tonight. Our girls played really well. Well, and you also mentioned to me when we were talking, you know, the youth. Um, you know, when I look out there and, like, Mara Serafini is the last one I remember when I was here. <laughs> but I pick up on the names and everything. You are a very young, wise, young team when you look at it by school year. But out here tonight, you look like you had – 12 junior seniors out there playing and they didn't miss a beat absolutely uh, mara is coming back and playing this year is huge for us i mean she is a tremendous athlete um, a great competitor a team leader um, we've got girls that are juniors now that have started for three this is their third year starting and um, when you've got an athlete like caroline simmons who can uh, pretty much just come out and do what she wants to on the floor um, we knew we, we could have a special season this year we talked about how Talent-wise and skill-wise, we have everything that we need. It's just between your two ears whether or not we're going to – how far we're going to go this year. And uh, we, we talked a lot about how when we get up on people, not letting them back in games. We did that a lot last year. We would jump out to a lead, and then before I knew it, I'm calling time out after we've given up five or six in a row. And these girls are mentally tough, and I don't think you're going to see that a lot this year. Well, we talk a little bit. You don't take waste much time. You're going to jump in the Black Diamond Conference action tomorrow. You make a road trip to Edwards County. Uh, what can you tell us about Edwards County? Well, they're good. I mean, they uh, unfortunately for their uh, outside hitter, um, Ali Goring, or Emmy Goring, I'm sorry, she tore ACL. She was probably their best player. But um, we played them this summer, and they're very competitive, and it's always hard to win in Edwards County. They've got a tradition um you know in southern illinois volleyball that's beyond you know i mean it's just up there with the best of the best and so we'll have to we'll have to play they've got a tremendous outside hitter in grace bishop that's a sophomore um we we beat them fairly easily this summer but that's summer ball and so i told them our first goal was to win the conference and you got to win your first game uh, to get off to a good start with that so we'll be ready to go for sure well, talk a little bit about the Black Diamond self. You know, normally, inherently, you always talk Black Diamond volleyball. You're always going to talk about Fairfield. Give us a little preview as to what the conference looks like this year. Um, Fairfield's good. I mean, they're, they've got Emerson Robbins, probably one of the best players in the state. Um, Four-year starter, a D1 player, um, just a tremendous athlete. Uh, they also have a couple of other returning uh, seniors that are really good and Chet's I mean he has a dynasty going over there he just reloads every year so um, and then Edwards County we talked about and Hamilton County they lost they're they're always strong they lost a bunch of girls they lost seven girls uh, from last year's team but I've talked to several coaches that have played them this summer and they have told me they're just scrappy they don't let the ball hit the floor um, Jason Hall is a tremendous coach and he's going to be competitive every time he puts a team on the floor so well, I appreciate the time, Chris. I wish you the best of luck. We'll be back up here in September. I know you got a very short schedule before Labor Day, but mm -hmm. wish you the best of luck, and we'll talk again soon. Thank you, and I appreciate you guys broadcasting these games. And we had a tr let me just say something about the crowd tonight too. I and mean, we had the Maroon Platoon rocking behind us, and and we tried to to get some uh, support from the from the community, and and the community came out and, and you know strong tonight. And so I just want to thank everybody for coming out to our home opener. Appreciate it, Chris. Good luck tomorrow. All right. Thank you. Appreciate it. 
And so that was Chris Lucas after Monday's win over Mount Carmel. And, of course, they went on to defeat Edwards County on Tuesday in two sets. And that was 25-19 and 25-22. We'll go ahead and take our final break of the morning. We come back. We'll wrap things up here on the first episode of the Saturday Morning Sports Show on 97.3 WRUL and 93.3 WROI AM 1460. It's the Saturday Morning Sports Show on 97.3 WRUL and 93.3 WROI. Cole Carter and Chris Myers, J.C. Tinsley across the hallway getting us on the air. Real quick, we will look through the very busy sports schedule next week for all the Carmine White County fall sports teams. And a reminder, the Junior Pro Bulldogs are in action right now up at the high school. If you want to watch some football today, uh, fifth and sixth grade, they come off a loss last week to Vienna. Looking for their first win today against Christopher. Meanwhile, the seventh and eighth grade Bullpups will look to start 2-0 and as they defeated Vienna last week 36-6. to That game will start uh, about 11 o'clock whenever the first game ends. But uh, junior high softball is also in action today. They're at the Johnson City Tournament. And then on Monday, boys and girls golf will host Waltonville. And then junior high baseball and softball will travel to Albion. On Tuesday, girls golf will host Benton. And the girls tennis team will begin their season in Mount Carmel. On Wednesday, the girls and boys high school golf teams will travel to El Dorado. And junior high baseball and softball will host Alney. On Thursday, it looks like boys golf will be at Mount Carmel. Girls tennis will host Mount Vernon. Junior high baseball and softball at home or at Benton. And volleyball will be back in action as they travel to Gallatin County. And then next Friday, of course, the Bulldog football team will host Hamilton County for their first home game of the season. You're going to see a lot of these sports schedules get a little crazy, especially with the outdoor sports, uh, golf, baseball, softball, tennis, trying to reschedule those matches that were canceled uh, this week due to the heat. But, Chris, that's about all we got for today. Normally we yeah. do our national sports segment. <laughs> College football does, I guess, begin today. A couple of interesting matchups, but I believe next week is the true week one for college. NFL starts the weekend after. But I'm just happy football's back. It, this is the best time of the year, the fall sports season. All we just need now is some true fall weather to put the cherry on top. We need some, you know, low sixties, upper fifties nights and you know, jacket weather and just the leaves starting to turn. It's it's the greatest time of the year. But yeah, if you love this game, it's such an exciting time of year, new season. Kids are hyped up no matter what what side of the scoreboard they're on. They're still excited about you know, especially seniors coming into their senior year playing, giving it, you know, it's their final season of, of, as high school football players, whatever fall sport they're playing. So exciting time for parents, getting another school year going, and just uh, just really looking forward to this entire fall season. An exciting and busy time of yes. year, no question about yes. it. Yes. Uh, and do you just want to tip our cap off all to – all the teachers, administrators, and students, mm-hmm. and everybody who makes things possible here at uh, not just Carmine, but every school district around the area, because it is a busy time, and it's a hectic time, and hope everybody has a great school year. But it's going to wrap things up for us this morning here in downtown Carmine. A big thanks to J.C. Tinsley across the hallway getting us on the air. For Chris Myers, I'm Cole Carter. We'll talk to you next week. Bulldog fans, have a great weekend.